Hello and welcome to PM Studios Java Programming Tutorials number 9. Today we are going to be going over methods, um, switches, and we are going to be making a compartmentalized multifunction calculator with those two things. So if you notice I've already gotten uh, started by creating our class and our main method. Um, we are going to be creating alternate methods outside of the main, so that is going to be the trickiest part of today's lesson. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to declare a couple integer values. So num1, num2, and answer, which we are going to set default to 0. And then we're also going to set select equal to 7. And I will explain why we set select to 7 a little bit later. So we're going to do string, verbal. I'm going to set that to blank string. Now we're also going to create our scanner. So scanner input equals new scanner system.n. Alright, and that'll be it for our variables for this lesson. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prompt the user to fill in numbers 1 and 2. So system.out dot print line. Please enter the first variable. And then we're going to do num1 equals input dot next int. This is all pretty standard stuff. We've been doing this since the very beginning of the tutorial series, so I'm not going to be spending too much time going over it. If you guys are confused at this point, I would strongly suggest going back to the beginning of the series and reviewing um, the content that we've gone over earlier. Okay. Num2 equals input.next. Okay, so now we've got num1 and num2 declared, and now what we're going to do is we're going to have the users um, define what they want select to be. So we're going to do a while statement here, and we're going to say while select. Select is greater than 6, or select is less than 1. And that's why we go ahead and set it to 7. You can set it to any number that's above 6 or below 1. Um, and this will also do its function perfectly fine. But basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to initialize the loop, but at the same time save time on coding. And uh, cut down on the number of variables that we have inside the program as a whole. So system.out.println. And here what we're going to do is we're going to prompt the user on uh, choosing which procedure they would like to perform with this multifunction calculator. Let's call it execute this time. Alright, so we're going to do 1 is add, 2 is subtract, 3 is multiply, 4 is divide. 5 is factorial, since we've done a factorial calculator in the past, and then 6, let's go ahead and do 6 as um, remainder. There we go. So 6 functions, and I'll show you the beauty of making uh, programs the way we're doing them right now. So we're going to do select equals input dot next int. Now I know some of you are wondering why I haven't gone and used strings or characters to declare which which type of equation that we want the user to do. Um, and the reason why is because uh, the switch statement that we're going to be doing right now, um, switch statements only allow for integer inputs for their cases. So if we want to streamline the process for ourselves and save on coding and memory space, it'd be easier just to ask the client or ask the, uh, the user for an integer input, and then from there we can go ahead and convert it. Or from there we can just go ahead and use it directly. So now we're going to declare our switch statement. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to declare our switch statement, and we're going to say switch select. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to create a switch statement. It's going to tab through the cases depending on what the value of select is. So now we're going to do case 1. 
and you can easily copy and paste all of these. So answer equals add nums. And this is how you call a method. We haven't created any methods yet, but we're going to uh, we're going to be creating the methods here soon, shortly after we get all this wrapped up. So we're going to do case one equals or case one, and if it, the case is one, the the uh, variable answer is going to be assigned to whatever the output of add nums num1 and num2 is. And basically what this is saying is that we're going to call the method add nums and we're going to send it the variables num1 and num2 from the main method. And I'll get into a little explanation of what that's going to do here in a bit. So verbal equals sum Alright, and then we're going to do break. <coughs> okay, and every case statement needs to end with a break. That's how you know that the case is over, that's how the um, computer recognizes that the case is over. So you're going to do case, content, then break it, and that'll be the end of the case. So now we can just copy all of that, and if I can get my things done, we can do case 2, all right, three, four, five, six, and we only need six. So, three, four, five, six. And the beauty of doing this, the, doing this the way it is, is that we can, uh, we can easily add more cases onto this with just a couple adjustments. So if you set your select high enough, you won't even have to change that. You'd simply have to add the alternative equation over here and this little line right here, and then you'd have to add the case for it and the switch and the method, and then you'd be done. So this is um, an easy way to make your programs modular and easy to update, so on and so forth. So we've got subnums. Multinums. Divnums. Let's do fact nums and remainder nums, so rem nums. Actually, let's call that mod nums, since the operation we're going to be using is a modulus. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close out of the switch statement, because we are done with that for now, and we're going to start creating our methods. So the first method we're going to be creating is going to be called public static int add nums int a and int b create the opening and closing braces and I do want to go over exactly what we just typed here real quick before I continue on because after this I'm just going to copy paste and fill everything out so uh, basically what we're doing is we're stating that the the method is public so everything inside the class's hierarchy um, everything inside the program's hierarchy pardon me can access this it is a static method and it's going to be returning the type of integer whereas the um, the main method isn't going to be returning anything because its return type is void. So it's going to be returning a type of integer and it states right here that it's expecting to receive two variables, both of them integers, um, and naturally you would declare the variable values for them individually and separately from what they are actually declared in in the other area. I mean you could call them whatever they are in the other area, but to simplify things and save on coding since these are only temporary variables you merely want to um, call them something simple like a b c d e f g and then you can work with them from there so basically what we're going to do inside this method is we're going to declare another integer and we're going to call it in c and we're going to do c equals a plus b and then we're going to return c now, that's, this is a big thing to keep in mind, that whenever you're do, doing a, um, a method that has any type of return type other than void, it is expecting to return something. So at the very end of the method, you need to return whatever it is you're hoping to return, or it will generate an error and it won't let you continue on until you uh, have the method return something. And it'll actually say uh, method return type is so and such and such, but uh, no return is found or something along those lines. So from here we're just going to swap things out. So sub num, and then we're going to change this to minus, and then we're going to do multi num, and change this to times, 
going to do divnum. You get the general idea. Divided by. And then this is going to be the only complex one that we're doing, and that's going to be fact num. And for this case, we need to do um, a for loop, as a matter of fact. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and set in c equal to 1, because if you remember from our factorial uh, calculator lesson, um, regardless of what the factorial is, the answer is always going to be 1, because 1 times 0 is 1. So regardless of what that is, it's always going to be returned as 1. And now we're going to go ahead and delete this line right here and do our for loop. So for int x equals a, we're going to do x is less than or equal to a, and then x plus plus. Whoopsies. And then inside here we're going to do c times equals y, just like we did in the factorial calculator lesson. So once that's all done, it's going to return C, and that'll run perfectly fine. And we only need one last one, and that's going to be our mod nums method. All right, and in the mod nums method, we are simply going to change this to our modulus sign, and that will take the remainder. So it's as easy as that. Uh, basically, the key things that I wanted to emphasize is that switch statements this is how you build the switch statement and the advantage to doing switch statements is specifically in this type of program is that they're very modular and all you need to do is tack on something here tack on something here if you uh, made it higher than mine so say we set it to 10 that would give you so much more playroom uh, with how far you could do it you could set it to 100 and then you'd never have to worry about changing it again unless you really found a hundred different functions to run on a calculator um, so We've got all of these cases, so if you wanted to tack something else on, all you'd simply do is go down here and do case 7, and then continue on with that, but that's how modular it is, and then you just have to copy one of these methods, paste it down, and create a new method for whatever the case is. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial. Hopefully I uh, made uh, methods clear. That's usually a big point that a lot of people get confused on um, with object-oriented programming. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the, uh, the comments area. And I hope to see you guys next time.